Hello, I'm Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, and today I've got to backtrack just a little bit, and believe it or not, though, there's actually a reason behind it. Um, I told you that the next fishing reel I did was going to be this Bronson Buddy 8, number 800, and I'm going to put that off. I still might do it today, uh, so you might still see the video today, but I received these two reels, and I got them... Uh, about three weeks ago from from Paul and uh, he asked me if I would go through these. Paul's just recently retired and he wants to start fishing these reels that he bought many years ago but he doesn't feel comfortable redoing them himself so he asked me if I would redo them and send them back to him and let him do them. I said okay I would do it even though I didn't need really either one of these reels. I've got a Johnson century that i've done and uh i also have a mitchell 440 that i have done and this is a mitchell 330 which is basically the same reel just a different gear train so if you wish to know how to take this bale assembly apart on a 330 or a 440 mitchell um it's got the spring loaded bale and it, and it, it will not go down if you just push it down you have to wind it down like that Okay, and uh, if you have an interest in how to take this apart, look at my Mitchell 440 um, video. It will show you exactly how to do that. What I'm going to do is so that Paul feels comfortable in the future, I'm going to do a quick service on both of these reels so that he knows exactly how to do it himself so he won't need to send them off to anyone else. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're to take it down just as far as it needs to go in order to to be properly serviced and be out running again. Okay, we're gonna take off the knob. Actually, you don't even need to do, well, we're going to because we're gonna to wanna to service this. But let's, hey, what let's do. Let's service this afterwards. We'll, we'll put that at the very end. In order to take off the spool, simply push in on the end and pull it off. There you go, done. Okay, look at how clean this reel is. This, this reel probably could go fishing just like it is, but because we recommend that you service a reel once a year. Uh, and it's been many years since this one was serviced. It's time for this reel to be done. So we're going to take off the handle. Okay. Now, this is, everything here is just working just as smoothly as you would ever want to see it. Um, we're going to go ahead. Look, there's still plenty of oil in this. Um, put you some oil in. Work that back and forth a little bit to keep that strong and well lubricated. Put some oil in there. All right. We're going to reverse this around because we actually want to test this reel. When we get it done, I'll flip it back around the other way when we send it back. Okay. That's got that part done. Now we're going to remove these three screws from the side case. Okay. It's important to have a screwdriver that properly fits these screws or you will tear them up. We're going to remove these three screws. Lift this off. Okay, there's a lot more grease in this reel than ever needs to be in here. So, let me get a paper towel. Chris Jenkins, you will love this reel. This is exactly what you call a grease bucket. And we're going to take this grease... All this tons and tons of grease that's in here that doesn't need to be in here. And we're going to pull it out of here. It's very obvious that this grease has been in here a long time. So, um, but I don't believe that it came from the factory this way. I think this was someone else's addition to this reel. And, uh, you want to get an idea that's what i've taken out so far and that's enough grease right there probably to lubricate 10 or 15 of these reels so paul if you were the one who put all this in here uh let's not do that in the future all right let's take a look at what we got now we've got most of that grease out okay this is our anti-reverse assembly and we're going to look at how it's done. If you look, it's got a spring 
that comes in around, goes on the inside of this and hooks in there. And the other side is going to come out and go around this post right here. Okay. So we're going to lift this out now, like so. And we'll clean that up and get it put back in there. Okay, what we're looking for is any shim washers that might be installed in here. Okay. And so far, we haven't found any. Okay, there's not one here on this post. There's not one on this post. There's not one here where this fit down over this post. Okay, so, so far there's none. We can now slide our main gear out and we're gonna look and on a Mitchell 300 or any of these three, three and four series reels, you always wanna look for shims because they're so easy to misplace and lose. Okay, no shim there, no shim here. Okay. Now we're going to lift this gear out. Okay. Scrape off the excess grease. Like so. All right. Now we're going Now, here's a shim. Right here. See those see that shim stack right there? Can you see it? Let me bring this up so you can see it better. Okay, there's a shim stack right here on top of this gear. Okay, we do not want to lose those. Okay, those are the ones that go on this post right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put them on that post so that even if we clean it, they'll still stay here. Let's see if there's any more. Did I get them all? All right, that's all the shims off of that gear. We're going to scrape some more grease out. Okay. And now we're going to lift this gear out. Okay. There's no more shims on it. This is our pinion gear. And we'll scrape off the excess grease like so. Set it over here. We're going to lift this gear out now. Okay. This is one with the three prongs on it. They're going to go into those right there. Okay, set that one over there. And then this one is our last one that we'll need to take out. Okay, we're gonna lift it out. This is our about this is our crosswind plate. And it of course is full of grease as well. There we go. I'll set that one to the side. And at this point, I can now come in one more time with my screwdriver, try to get the rest of this excess grease out. All right, that's as far as I can go with that grease removal. So we're going to stop at that point. And we're going to come back with a Q-tip or cotton swab of whatever brand you wish to use. And we're going to take and try to get this rest of this extra grease out of here. And we are going to spray this with a little WD-40. And give it a little assistance in dissolving the rest of the grease that's in here. Okay. And I'm gonna use this kind of like a sopping, like a mop. Try to get most of the rest of this out of here. All right, now at this point, we can go ahead and remove the axle shaft. And let's slide the excess grease off of that as well. All right, now we're gonna throw all that out. We're gonna come back. One more paper towel and wipe this up. 
did all that grease in there do any harm? No, I don't believe for a moment that it did. Um, as a matter of fact, look at how clean and pretty everything is in there. But excess grease does tend to slow things down. So I suggest you not put any that much grease in there. All right, now we're gonna come back and we're gonna remove this nut off of here. Okay. Okay, we're gonna slide this up now. Okay, with that up, we should be able to slide in. Lift this plate out, flip it over. Okay, there we go. Now this is definitely different from what a Mitchell 300 has. Mitchell 300 has a different design plate. Okay, and we've got this click right here. Gonna clean this out of here. Okay, got that done. Now we have this set of washers right here. We'll set those there. And now we'll slide this up. And the only thing we want this all for is to be able to clean it a little bit. I'm going to take a toothbrush and clean the grease out of the teeth. These are going to be ready to go right back in. This is a this is a shim stack right here. Okay, don't lose them. Keep them in the same order that they came out. And if you look very carefully, let's see, give me a good pointer. Okay, if you look very carefully right here, this is a head washer or shim, and you do not want to let that slide off and lose it. And this one has two of them. Sometimes one will be stuck to the bottom right here and it'll come off. So make sure that you've got those and that you don't lose them. Don't lose these shims that we just put on this post. All right, as I go on from here, Every time that I go to clean and lubricate something, I'm just going to go into fast forward motion and uh, you'll get to see all of that on both reels. Okay, so here we go. We're ready to start reassembly. We're going to put some grease on the rotor gear. A little bit right here. Not that that touches. It really shouldn't touch, but we'll put a little bit there in case it ever gets close enough to rub just a little bit. Then we're going to put a little bit right here on this shaft. And we're going to slide that all the way in. Like so. Okay. With that in, now we're going to reinstall these shims them back into place right there like that then we're going to install this washer and if you look it's got a keyway right here so when you sit this in here that keyway is going to drop right into there now what's going to happen is when you go to put this in it's going to want to fall off although it didn't if it does take it back off and put just a small dab of grease on it Okay, now we're gonna set this baffle plate back in here. Like so. Fit it on. All right. Oh, we, we, let's do something real quick. I said that I wasn't gonna take this apart, and I'm not. But what we are gonna do is before we put all this back together, we're gonna clean off the old grease right here. Okay, and we're gonna put a little bit of grease back in there, like so. And we're gonna put a little bit on the teeth right there, that gear. We're not gonna take that gear out. Okay, we're gonna leave it installed. Okay, and then we're gonna put a drop of oil right here. I don't know if you can see that, this is a lever right here. And this locks the bale. 
Okay, where you're gonna put just a little bit of grease on the back side of this plate so that it can slide easily. And there I went and lost the, the shims. Okay, let's put the shim stack back on now. Okay, shim stack is reinstalled. This washer shim is installed here. We have oiled the inside trip release for this. And if you ever need to know how to take that apart, like I said, go over and look at the 440. It's exactly the same. There we go, work that down. Once you get the work down, take your nut. Tighten it back down, like so, and now that should function. And then pop it up. We're going to put a drop of oil here, drop of oil here, one here, one here, one there, and one behind there. Come around to the other side and put a drop of oil there. That should lubricate all of that so that it functions well. Okay, and remember that's not going to stay down when you push it down unless you reach over here and pull this lever the rest of the way and you can do it that way. But what brings it down is rotating, which will take and push this lever all the way over. There we go. Just like that. This, this is a sweet reel. All right, at this point we're going to reinstall the axle shaft. And you don't want tons of grease on here, just a little bit. If you get too much on, go ahead and wipe a little off. Okay, we're gonna slide, install it with this flat side facing up. Slide it in, goes all the way down. Now, if for some reason you had a lot of corrosion or dirt and grease in here, you can take these two screws out right here and take this bottom plate off. But I'm trying to keep this simple so that it, uh, so that Paul can do this himself without causing him a lot of grief. I want him to not have to feel like he has to send it off to somebody to get it fixed. I want him to say, hey, I can do that. That's my reel. I can do that myself. And I believe he can once he's watched this video, okay? If you look, there's a pin right here on the bottom of this plate, and it's going to go in that hole right there. Slide it in. See how that plate slides up and down? All right. Now, put this plate right square in the middle. When you have that plate in the middle, you should be able to put some grease in here on the top of this. And then you should be able to take this, hang on a second, I need another Q-tip or cotton swab. Now, you're gonna sit this down to where this middle post right here, see the three? You wanna set that middle post into either side, it doesn't matter, but it has to be in that middle hole. And now if you wanna see if you've got it installed correctly, what you do is rotate it around, and as it rotates around, it's gonna go all the way around. Now what happens if you don't get it in there correctly? I'll show you. Okay, let's say you get it one tooth off. Then what's gonna happen is it'll roll. I missed it. I didn't get it all the way one tooth off. Okay, it'll roll some and it's gonna jam up like that. That's how you know that you didn't get it right. Okay, so when you wanna set it in, put that those two, the two centers right dead in the center and then take the center here and line it up just like that. And if you've got it right, it will rotate all the way around. Okay, we wanna put a little bit more grease right here because that's gonna be riding on that. All right. That's it for this part for now. 
Everything else is going to be happening over here on this side. So let's take this side and let's wipe it down. Let's grease our shaft. Make sure that if you have any dirt in this hole, that the shaft goes in, that you've cleaned it out. Slide the main gear down into that shaft, rotate it around. Now remember, you don't want to lose those shims right there because they set up your alignment. Okay, now this gear Clean it off. This gear is then going to slide directly on like this, and you have to get it to mesh with that. Okay, once you've done that, make sure before you do that that you put just a little bit of grease on the post. Okay, then you're going to come back and you're going to grease this pinion gear. as it may, meets up with this gear on the rotor head. Okay, when you got that done, you're gonna wanna come back and put some grease on the gear itself, main gear, side teeth, and you don't have to grease every tooth. Then you can spin this around and that will spread that grease around. Then you're gonna come back, put some on this gear on its teeth, like that. Put a little bit of grease on this post now. And put a little grease on these teeth. And then put a little bit on these teeth. All right, Paul, I'm hoping that you are now able to see the difference in how much grease is in here and how much there needs to be in here and how much was in here. Now, before we put this one on, let's go ahead and put our anti-reverse lever back in. This particular anti-reverse lever is kind of preset. It's kind of hard to get it wrong. Okay, so let's set it in place. It goes in like this. Okay, that goes onto that post and then this spring goes behind this post over here. And now this lever over here should pivot. And this is important because I don't think what's been happening over the years, I don't think people have been oiling this post right here where this lever is. And these things jam up. They get a little corrosion in them and they quit working. Okay, so make sure that you've oiled that post in there and then put yourself a little dab of grease right there. All right, now we're gonna set this gear back on like so. Anti-reverse, let's turn it off. And at that point, this is ready to go and merge back to this side. And if you've ever done a 300, you can see, yeah, this is definitely a different gear setup. Okay. Now we're going to slide this in. It, it works best if you don't turn this upside down. If you can keep this one sideways and this one sideways and just merge the two together like this. Okay. And once you've done that, go ahead and align your screws. And let's set them back in place. Make sure they're all snug, but don't over tighten. All right. I believe that we have it set up correctly. There we go. So far, so good. Let's go ahead, crank the handle back on, tighten it down, tighten the handle. All right. 
anti-reverse is on, anti-reverse works. This is one sweet 330 reel. Okay. Now we're gonna come back to this. I told you I would take this apart later and service it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Go ahead, take off the cap. Take off your pressure plate, like so. And notice, that's all there is to this one. You take off the bottom side. Okay, you've got your clicker on the side. This is your clicker here. This is your spring for your clicker. That's your drag clicker. Okay. We're going to go ahead and wipe off the gear real quick. Like so. Okay. Now, this is going to be riding ever so tightly against the bottom of this when we tighten it up. So, we're going to put a little grease there and a little bit right here on these teeth. Slide that back in, like so. Wipe off the top right here. And I'm gonna come back with a cotton swab and wipe out right inside here. Verify that this is clean here. Wipe this off now. Leave a little bit of grease on this because here's what happens, folks. If you don't, and some water gets inside there, this little guy rusts up pretty bad. So go ahead. I've seen a lot of these that were pretty corroded. Go ahead, tighten that back down. Not real tight, just snug it. Slide that back in place. Let's test, see if we got a drag. Here's our clicker. Tighten down the drag. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and loosen it back up a little bit. All right. I'm going to wipe this off real quick off camera. All right, Paul. There is your Mitchell 330. Very nice reel. You've got yourself a winner right there. As long as you take care of it and do what I just did to it once a year, you'll have that thing for many, 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 many years to come. Now, real quickly, let's go ahead and knock out this Johnson Century 40th anniversary reel. Oh, there we go. Come in. Okay, we got interrupted here for just a second. Uh, this is kind of dirty inside, actually. Paul has fished this reel a little bit. It's dirty. It needs to be wiped out inside. We'll take care of that. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove the rotor. Slide that off. There we go. This reel has been fished, which is good. This reel should be fished. Okay. I will recommend in the future, Paul, when you get done fishing, if you'll take them, wipe off the inside of this before you let all that stuff dry up in there it'll be much beneficial okay this all looks pretty good though all right we definitely got some old crusties in there that we're gonna have to take care of get out of there okay let's see if this is a 10 millimeter okay unscrew that off of there And Paul, this, this is one of the simplest reels there is out there. Uh, I think you'll be happy to see it. And it's... All right, we take out these two screws. And now, this side cover over here comes off. Like so. Come on. When that comes out, your button will come up like this, rotate up and out, and this side piece comes off. All right, and there you have it. That's really about all you need to do. There we go, we'll take that out, like so. And all you gotta do is clean these parts up and you're ready to go again. So let's clean them up real quick and get you back 
flowing again. First thing I'm going to do is spray this front cover. See the corro see the dirt and stuff that's in here? It looks like this was fished in some really green mossy water. All right, we're ready to reassemble. So we're gonna start off with our axle shaft assembly and we have to make sure that it can move up and down. And what we'll do is we'll put a little oil in it first, just to make sure that it's gotten down inside it. And then we'll take and put a little bit of grease on the spring assembly. And then as it works up and down, it's gonna move some of that grease in there. Then we'll come back, put some on the pinion gear. Like so. And I prefer on these rotating surfaces to put oil, which is what I'm gonna do here. And we're gonna slide this back in. It's gonna have, it has to go in through the back slot first, like so. And it's never fun. But it's never that hard either. Slide it through the back slab, and then it can slide back forward like so. All right, that's got that in. It's going to need to stay forward like that, or it's going to just drop back out. Okay, next comes the main gear, which we'll come back, and we'll put some grease on the teeth of the main gear. And then we're going to take and put some oil on the shaft of the main gear. And then just before we slide this main gear in, we're going to take and put just a little bit of oil here and here. And then we're going to put just a dab of grease here and here. And we're going to put a little bit on the back side here on the anti-reverse. And the reason we want to do that, if you look, see the scar marks on this? No more than this reel has been used, it's still scarred from that plate dragging on this. So put a little bit of grease and it will help keep the anti-reverse from grinding away on the back of the gear. Slip that back in like so. And now that's just about ready to go back in. The next piece that's got to go in is this button right here. The button you have to slide in from the back side. Just before we do it, we're going to put a little bit of grease here and we're going to put some in the hole right here. Now we'll slide the button in like so, bring it down and hook it in. And before we do this, let's go ahead and put just a dab of grease right here on the drag mechanism. All right, I'll slide that back into place. We're gonna take this side plate and this shaft right here has gotta go through the hole in the button. And you may have to flip it over so you can see it go through like so. Once that's done and you've got it in, you're ready to take this side and put it back in like that. And if it's fitting properly, which it should, Everything should line back up. And there's a slot right here. Make sure that slot goes into that slot when you hook it in. Otherwise, it's going to hold it out just slightly. Make it stand proud. And if it's standing proud, it doesn't want to go in the hole. We're going to put this screw in. And this screw in. Don't over tighten them. Just snug them up nicely. Okay. 
Now you should be able to slide on your handle, tighten the nut down. Put a dab of oil down the shaft, like so, and you should be able to wind this okay, like that. You hear your anti-reverse clicking? Okay, if you go to the neutral position, like here, there is no anti-reverse. If you go all the way the other way, now the anti-reverse works the opposite way. And that's if you want, want to either set it up on the other side or as um, Dan Selvig fishes, he's got a uh, reel that he fishes this way. I think it's a citation that he's fishing this way. Okay, all you have to do is flip the spool over the opposite direction. Turn it upside down, flip that around, and you're fishing on the other side. So they're very nice reels. I like these reels. And that's what I grew up with. Okay, I think I got mine Christmas of 67. And oh, was I proud of that reel. Okay, we're going to put a very, very, very light coating of grease on the inside of this. And I mean very light because your drag still needs to be able to drag okay we're sitting in this direction we're winding this way and if you look it'll tell you which direction then that this rotor goes in okay and it'll tell you on top of the spool right hand or left hand wind well it doesn't even tell you the left hand but if you got the right there's your right hand okay that doesn't mean somebody didn't wrap the spool backwards, though. So, look at how it goes. Okay, slide that on. Slip this on. If I notice, um, Paul, that you've got this drag turned all the way up. and Or almost all the way up. And if you feel that you're... Yeah, this drag needs to be... I'm going to adjust this drag just a little bit, Paul. I'm going to give you um, one more notch, two more notches of drag. And the way that's done, you lift up on this knob right here, which is easier said than done when you got greasy fingers. Let's see if I can clean this up. Okay. You want to lift up on this knob... Like so, you can, you can pull the whole thing up like that. And that makes the screw head go down. See that? Okay, when you do that, then you should be able to go ahead and rotate this. I turned it about one third of the way. Okay, we still got drag at, the, at zero. But now, when we turn it up, uh, I think I went too far. Let's back it up. Yeah, we're going to back it up just a little bit. One notch. Okay. Like so. Okay. Now let's see what we got. There, we still got drag. Let's go to eight. That's almost complete drag. Okay, so this right here, your former set setting at seven is now about a five okay so i think i think you'll be happier being able to use the middle drag but yet you still got the capability of cranking down if you really need it okay this has been wiped down we're going to put a little bit of grease here slide a little bit up under that let's exercise a little bit to help it get under now we're going to set this rotor back on like so for those of you in the Zebco world, they would call it a spinner head. In the uh, much of the rest of the world, this is a rotor. Let's tighten that down. Okay, now let's see what happens. We push the button. This pin should go in, and it does. The pin clears. Okay, when you wind it, the pin should come fully out, and it does. Okay, push the button, good. Make sure the 
There's no wobble on the rotor. I think we're tight all the way, but we'll take it one more time. Good. All right. We're going to take and uh, slide this over. Put the line back through the head. Now, I'm not going to strip this line off for you, Paul. I think you're capable of stripping your line off and uh, putting on new line. But I really believe that you do need new line on both of these if they've been sitting as long as you said they have. And looking at the line on this one, yeah, it's been sitting quite a while. Okay, let's put this down. Tighten the cover. That's really tight. Drag it. Seven. Oh, that's really nice. That's good drag. Okay, we'll wind it in. Let's click the button, make sure it comes out okay, and it does. Okay. There we have it. Paul, I hope you're satisfied with your Johnson Sentry and your Mitchell 330. These are sweet reels, the both of them. Uh, let's go ahead and bring this back in. And if anybody's wondering what this is for right here, you can click that over and it locks this so that it doesn't pop up. Okay? That's in case you're fighting a nice fish. You want it locked in. And I think uh, Chris was wanting to tell me that that's something you definitely want to do because it's real easy to sp uh, spring those up by accident. I'm going to put your swivel back on this so that you're not having to fight to try to get the line out. And... Uh, I hope that uh, you're satisfied with what I've done for you. And I'm hoping that in the future, you'll be able to handle it yourself. So there we are, the Mitchell 330, the Johnson uh, um, 40th anniversary, it's Johnson Century Reel. And these are for Paul. Paul, I'm going to be mailing these out either tomorrow. No, I won't be doing it tomorrow. I've got um, Love Your Neighborhood duties tomorrow. So that won't happen tomorrow. I will mail them out on Monday and um, you'll be getting them back soon. If um, For those who were looking for the Bronson Buddy, the reason that um, I didn't jump right into that Bronson Buddy 600 is I got a call, phone call from Ken, the guy that has been dropping all these reels with me to be done. And it turns out he did not take the job in Ohio. So he's not moving uh, tomorrow and he'll be staying around. So I've got more time to get to his reels done. And, um, if anybody else has got something that you'd like to request, please do feel free. Uh, don't just send me things, please, but let me know. Let me know that you'd like to do, like me to do something special. I can, um, like I did for Paul here. I won't necessarily always make a video of them. Sometimes maybe I'll just get you up and running and send it back out. If, uh, you like the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, I understand. That's fine. Uh, hit the dislike button, but tell me what you didn't like. Anybody who would like to subscribe, please do so. I think I might have hit 450 today, subscribers. And um, I'm hoping you guys are liking what I'm doing here. I'm thinking I might go fishing tomorrow. I'm having to make up my mind. Uh, I might make it up in the morning. So for now, that's Rick Stivers, the Young Martin Drills, signing out.